What's up and welcome to the HVAC Dope Show. Today's video is probably going to be the dopest video we have ever made. But before we get started, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Let's dive in. So heat pumps and the Inflation Reduction Act, how does this affect you? First off, let's talk about what a heat pump is because we have a lot of questions about them. Um, it's not a new technology. It's actually been around for a while, but they're gaining popularity with the decarbonization movement. And what a heat pump is, is it's simply an air conditioner with a reversing valve that reverses the flow of refrigerant and therefore transfers heat from outside the home to inside the home. And I know it probably seems confusing of how you could get heat out of the air outside when it's 10 degrees outside, but without nerding out on you, absolute zero, which is a measurement of uh, freezing on the Kelvin scale, which is separate from Fahrenheit and Celsius. And absolute zero is when particles stop moving because it's so cold and it's actually a theory. I don't think you can really get so cold that particles stop moving, at least not practically. Uh, but again, I'm not going to nerd out on that topic. So let's dive into the Inflation Redu Reduction Act and what it means for you, uh, how heat pumps and how you can save some money. Now, I'm actually going to be going over an article that is available online from a website called Rewiring America, and that link is in the description below. So if you prefer to read the article for yourself, have at it. Uh, otherwise, you can watch this video and we'll give you the skinny. So the first part is that uh, this is probably what you're interested in is what types of rebates are available for heat, pay heat pumps. So we'll go ahead and read this article and break it down for you because it actually sums it up quite nicely. Uh, so first off, inside the Inflation Reduction Act is the High Efficiency Electric Home Rebate Act, and it includes $4.5 billion in direct rebates for low and moderate income households that install new efficient electric appliances using a framework proposed in our appliance rebate plan for Instance, a low-income household will receive a rebate covering the full cost of a heat pump installation for space heating up to a cap of $8,000. Um, this household could receive up to $1,750 for a heat pump water heater, $850 for an electric, or $840 for an electric stove, electric clothes dryer. goes on to explain some other rebates that are available through this uh, appliance rebate plan, but we'll continue on and stick to the items as it relates to heat pumps. Now, part two of this plan is uh, tax deductions for electric upgrades. And what is allowed in a nutshell, I'll just cut to the chase, is that you're allowed to deduct from your taxes up to 30% of the cost of upgrades in your home. These are deductions are limited to $600 per measure, up to $1,200 per household. And the exception to that is that households can deduct 30% of the cost of buying and installing a heat pump water heater or heat pump for space heating up to $2,000. And the way this reads, it almost sounds like a tax deduction, but I don't think that's the case because if that was the case, you'd be better off just doing a cost segregation study. I'm not a CPA, so talk to your accountant but because that's kind of dumb, but I think it's an actual tax credit. And I have another website that I'm going to go to in a second that, I, that breaks it down a little bit more. Um, but uh, Rewiring America, it's written by tree huggers, not tax professionals. So anyways, it sounds like it's a, a tax credit, not a tax deduction. Um, he goes on to say also included in this bill is the agenda of pumping up the Defense Production Act with their Electrify for Peace policy plan. God, you got to love these titles. Electrify for Peace. Who doesn't want to do that? And uh, just really quick, because I find this interesting, I'm going to put in my two cents. The purpose is to help... Europe reduce its reliance on Russian oil and gas in the medium term. If you morons seriously think that adding higher electrical demand to the grid is the way to do that, we've got bigger problems. But hey, that's what the government is good for, taxing you and making bad decisions. But seriously, if you really wanted to reduce dependence on Russian oil, and I'm not going to make this political video, but what you should do is sh stop shutting down clean nuclear faci facilities like they just did all over Europe. Anyways... <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on that. Uh, total morons. But um, And that's the extent of the bill as it relates to heat pumps. It looks like there's some other provisions for EV adoption, clean vehicle credits, solar, and a few other provisions that probably each need their own video just to go over. 
But I also like this other article in the description below that's from HVAC.com and they break it down pretty simply. Um, if your household income is 80% below your area's median income, then you'll receive the maximum rebate covering your new heat pump at up to 100% of its value at $8,000, which is actually a great deal. Um, if your household income is from 80 to 150%, you'll receive up to 50% of the heat pump's cost. It doesn't say what the cap is, so I'm wondering if that's 8,000 or 4,000. My guess is 4,000. Um, and that's because if you read further down, it says if you're a baller, you are not out of luck if your income exceeds 150% of your area's median income. So all you ballers out there, you're still going to receive a 30% tax credit up to $2,000 on new heat pumps. So that being said, it's not a huge incentive, incentive to go out and buy a heat pump. I would prefer to buy one for comfort reasons. And honestly, when it comes to heat pumps, go big or go home. Um, we have some more videos coming up after this that will link that goes through VRV Life um, and Dyke and Fit, which like I said, in my opinion, if you want a heat pump, VRV Life is the way to go, but it's definitely not the cheapest solution. If you're wanting to increase comfort and your home and get one of the most efficient heat pumps on the market, that's the way to do it. Um, but it also has zoning capability. I mean, there's a lot of perks to, to VRV life. But uh, on a separate note regarding the $8,000 price being covered if you're in the, uh, a lower income household, let me break it down for you because this may not be a good decision if you're going for the cheapest one. So even if the government is going to essentially give you a new heat pump with a tax credit, um, and the reason is that honestly, it's hard, it's hard to beat free. If the government's giving you $8,000 in the form of a tax credit for a heat pump to cover the cost, that is great. But what I would do is budget for a higher efficiency heat pump with whatever you can save and plan on spending over 8,000 because heat pumps are honestly a lot more expensive to run. If you are comparing it to an 80% efficient, uh, furnace, they pull a lot more power, especially the, the cheapest base model heat pumps. And I know what the government is trying to do is they intend to reduce um, emissions by, but I mean, <laughs> they're, they're really increasing demand on the electrical grid if they're just putting in a bunch of these cheaper um, heat pump models. Uh, our parts cost on some of these heat pumps is way over that. Um, so I don't know what, uh, you're not going to get the best heat pump on the market. But either way, if you can use that $8,000 tax credit to get a nicer heat pump and then just put down a little bit more, you're going to be in a much uh, better position. You're going to get a nicer piece of equipment that's quieter um, and just is a lot more uh, efficient so your energy bill doesn't skyrocket after putting it in. So uh, that being said, I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, it would mean the world to me if you smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for tuning in to the HVAC Dope Show. I am your host, Howard Binder, signing off.